Welcome, my friends, to our weekly discussion group. This week, we are going to try a little experiment with voice radio. I have a feeling this technology is really going to change the world when the Great War is over. As we speak, students are standing by at the College of the Sacred Heart in North Denver with a radio receiver, waiting to hear the sound of our voices. We have already established a telephone connection so the students can confirm that they are hearing us. This ought to be a very interesting experiment. Senator Shafroth, would you mind flipping that switch? College of the Sacred Heart students, can you hear us? Yes, they say they can hear us. They well, can hear us. that's fantastic. Then let's get started. First of all, we should all introduce ourselves to our newly confirmed radio audience. As they know, I am Father John Brown, president of the College of the Sacred Heart, a small Jesuit college in North Denver. We've recently bought two, brought two schools together, and while we are not known, that we are now known as the College of the Sacred Heart, my fellow Jesuits and I have been learning more about the Jesuit Saint Saint John Francis Regis of France. He's an interesting fellow. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear more about him in the years to come. Let's go around the table. Please introduce yourself. Well, I am Nell Campbell Ross O'Brien, but all of you wonderful Denverites know me as Polly Pry, the famous reporter. I started out at the New York World. Moved here to Colorado 20 years ago when my family had tuberculosis, immediately got a job at the Denver Post, broke the fabulous story about Alfred Packer being innocent. As thanks for that, I had to protect my two bosses when they were being shot by Alfred Packer's horrifying attorney, Pughead Anderson. And then as thanks for that, they later fired me for exposing union corruption. When I started my own newspaper, if you can imagine a woman having a newspaper in Denver, moved back to New York, I came back here, now I'm working with the Denver Times, I've been in France, I interviewed Panchavia, and I'm thrilled to be here with all of you. We are thrilled to have you here. Sir? I am John Shafroth, the uh, United States Democratic Senator for Colorado. Uh, before that, I was the only man ever elected to two consecutive terms as governor of Colorado. And in, in that time, we got through the key progressive reforms to improve our democracy. <coughs> Excuse me. Initiative, referendum, recall direct election of senators, and uh, direct primaries. And before that, I was in the United States House of Representatives, uh, representing the Denver area for 10 years. And I got the nickname Honest John because in 1904, I, I resigned after it became clear that my close election that year uh, only came about because of election fraud that had been perpetrated by the Denver machine. And sir, please introduce yourself to our radio audience. Well, I will. Thank you very much, Father. Uh, John C. Schaefer. I moved here just a few years ago, but I uh, uh, went to Chicago as a young man and made my fortune at the Board of Trade in Grain Futures and uh, helped develop the Chicago streetcar system, built streetcars in Indianapolis and other cities. Then I got into newspapers, and as Ms. Pry knows well, I got the Chicago Evening Post, the Indianapolis Star, the, the uh, Terre Haute Star, Muncie, Indiana, Frankfurt, uh, Kentucky, and uh, I had a son out here, Kent. He came out and invited me for a visit. Uh, enjoyed it very much. I love the weather out here. So I went to uh, former Senator Patterson and I bought me the uh, Rocky Mountain News and the Denver Times. So Miss Pry is an employee of mine and we're very proud to have her. I like Colorado so much that in addition to my house in Evanston, Illinois, I have bought the ranch down in Jefferson County, southwest of, uh, of the city of Denver, and I've named it after my two sons, Kent and Carol. We call it the Ken Carroll Ranch. Sounds like a fine name for a fine place. It's a wonderful place. And ma'am, please introduce yourself for our radio audience. I'm Emily Griffith, and like so many people at this table, I came to Denver as well and have stayed and made my livelihood here. In particular, last year I had the chance to open a school because education is my passion, and particularly making sure that everyone has access to education. My school offers free classes at night to adults where they can learn skills and trades and will help them have a better livelihood and be able to raise their families more effectively. Um, we thought there would be a lot of interest in this school. We thought maybe we'd get 200 adults in the first year. In the first week, we got 1,400 students, which says so much about what needs to happen in Denver today. As a fellow educator, I could, I very much agree. 